In this video, we are going to uh, configure a container host, install Docker, and uh, of course, uh, run a couple of commands to manage containers and see how this would uh, work. And uh, some uh, things I want to mention. In this video, I am going to use a server that is connected directly to the internet. So the commands that I will run to install Docker and to get container images requires internet access. Um, and I will also go over just a couple of uh, commands to manage containers, not because it's very complex. If you guys are interested in more container topics, uh, let me know, write uh, some comments. And uh, maybe in the future I can create a series uh, of videos only about containers, which I think would be very interesting. And now with this being said, I'm uh, logged on on my container host right now. And the first two commands uh, are used to actually install uh, containers and also Docker. So first let's install the Docker provider module. And this should not take too long. I think it takes about 30 seconds, more or less. And now with the Docker provider module installed, we can actually install the Docker package. And with this command, besides the downloading Docker and configuring it, you also install the containers feature. And here we go, now we have Docker installed. Uh, we have been notified that we need to restart the, the server because we installed also the containers feature. And before I restart, I just want to mention that I did one more thing before starting the video. I installed the Hyper-V uh, role because we are also going to try out Hyper-V containers. So if you uh, want to not be bothered with that, you can install it uh, also and then we can continue. So let's restart the server. And with the server restarted, we can um, uh, go on. Now we have to make sure that the Docker service is running. So let's uh, go ahead and run the start service Docker command. We can also get the service to see that it's okay. And now it's running. So if everything uh, worked and everything is okay, we can use the docker version command to get some info about uh, our docker installation. And you see that we got uh, some stuff, so seems to be okay. And we get uh, info about the server part and about the client part because docker has also the client and the server installed at the same time. Another helpful command with general information is docker info. And this actually shows a lot more uh, things. Like if uh, we are in debug mode, what plugins we have, uh, how many containers are running or stopped, how many images we have and so on. Now the Hyper-V part we don't need to do it or I don't need to do it because I did it uh, before I started the video. So we can now go ahead and actually uh, see a couple of commands to run and manage containers. The first thing we will actually need to do is get a, a container image, a Docker image. Mm -hmm. And for Windows Server, we have two base images that we can get, the Nano Server and the Server Core image. We could also get uh, already made images like images with .NET or with different applications. But let's uh, stick to the basics and get the nano server image. And this would be the command to do this. And you see that the nano server image itself has two layers, which I think one is the base OS in one is uh, with a couple of updates.
and this uh, to download should not take very long after it downloads it it also has to unpack it and one uh, cool thing is that on windows server 2016 actually the uh, base images are a little bigger than they are in windows server 2019 and also in uh, future releases of uh, windows server so in the next uh, ltsc release of windows server the images should be even smaller than on windows server 2019 so less time to download and less time to unpack them so now with the image downloaded the next uh, command is actually helpful if you want to get a list of all the images you have on your container host in our case we only have one we see uh, that it's uh, nano server with the tag latest uh, this is the image id and uh, the size is 1.16 gigabytes and like i said in uh, future windows server releases the sizes get smaller and smaller now let's run our first container since we have the container image the first command is uh, something that you won't use daily to run container images but uh, let me go through it so docker run is the basic command to run images minus ti is used when you need to go into a container image interactively and uh, actually run commands from the keyboard and see the output then you specify the container image you want to run and then you specify a program you want to run in it which in our case will be cmd.exe and uh, why you will not uh, run this command too often is because this is not the way you run containers this is just a way to maybe debug containers or test installing different things in containers but you would basically run them in the background let me show you how this works so run this container uh, with the cmd.exe in uh, interactive mode and i think we should run this from the powershell console and not from ISE. if i'm not mistaken this should be better for you to see what is actually happening and you see that now i'm in the container itself if i try the host name command for example you see that i get a random name that the container image generates if i try uh, ip config i get the ip of the container itself and so on so uh, this is the way that you can uh, run a container in interactive mode and test different commands let's exit the container now we exit it to our normal powershell prompt again let's go back to ISE the second command is actually the command that we would use to run this container uh, productively we still use docker run we specify the container image but then you, we don't have the minus ti since we don't need it and in our case we have to specify a uh, program that will run continuously because the way containers work each container tracks a specific uh, exe program that needs to run when that program ends also the container will stop because this is the way containers actually function usually this would be replaced by a service uh, by a web service or something else that listens to uh, client requests in our case we just need to test the container so i'm going to give it a continuous ping and this command uh, should be okay to run it from the ISC. And now we see the output of the container, but we can use Control C to break out of this output. And even though I use Control C, you will see that the container is still working. And the next command actually will show us exactly that docker ps is a command with which we can list the uh, running containers and you can see uh, we have uh, two containers that are now running 
the nano server and the uh, the first container the nano server with the ping and the first container with the exe we can also get a list of processes that run in a specific container using the container id which is this and with the docker top command so we just specify a container id here and if we run this command we will get uh, for example the ping.exe and other uh, uh, processes that run in our container we can also use docker ps minus a to get a list of all the containers those that are running and those that are stopped so uh, any container that you have that has not been uh, stopped yet and we can uh, remove a container for example we have one that has uh, exited which is the second one so if we want to remove this one permanently we again take its id and we put it in the docker rm command rm stands for remove and if we run this command now we run docker ps a and that container is gone we can also leverage the id to stop containers and i'll show you right now with uh, the one from above we can just use the id into the docker stop command and now if we run a docker ps we should have only one container that is still running and i want to show you one more thing i want to show you also how to use the hyper v isolation before this i want to remind you that you need to install hyper v and if you use a virtual machine you need to enable nested virtualization with that being said the only difference between running a container as a windows server container as opposed to a hyper v container is this part the rest of the command is the same but you need to add isolation equals hyper v to make it a hyper v container so if we run this command right now and let's run it from uh, the powershell prompt the first time it will take a little because it needs to create a virtual machine and uh, then to run the actual container image but you will see that it's pretty fast and you see that now we are in our container pretty cool we can exit it and let it uh, run in the background and basically that was it uh, this was a very quick look at how to use containers on windows server 2016 of course there are a lot more things to cover but this was just an introductory video i hope you enjoyed it please like the video if you did also subscribe if you want to be notified of uh, new videos that i upload and thanks a lot for watching